Hey guys, I want to welcome you back. I am Big John here at, in Alaska. I live in Anchorage, Alaska, by the way, and I'm one of the many Alaskan carnivores that's actually trying to get healthier uh, eating the carnivore diet. And in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about just basic carnivore snacks and how quick and easy they are to make. Uh, what I have here today on this, this is just some basic ham that we can get at Costco. I'm going to slice this up into little cubes. Uh, we're going to put it in, a, I got a brand new cast iron pan that I wanted to try out. I haven't I had it for a long time. I've just never used it. I usually, I usually use the bigger pan with the lid. Uh, this time we're going to be using a little bit different pan. And here I have two of the most amazing sausages uh, that we can find here in Alaska, which is a uh, Alaska reindeer sausage. These things are awesome, by the way. So really super simple, easy treats. And in the meantime, we're still going to be discussing other random carnivore topics and uh, some situations or whatever I can come up with, you know, as I go throughout the process of this video today. Uh, but first, we're going to start off with these um, reindeer sausages, and I'm just cut them up however you like. Now, the easiest way to do this is just slice them up and then toss them in a pan, add in some natural fat, either uh, it could be butter, could be bacon grease, could be tallow, uh, could be lard, anything like that. Super simple. But the whole process is we're just going to put these in the pan. We're going to get a good sear on each side of these. And if you want to make them pretty, you can kind of cut them kind of at a diagonal. And the reason I do this stuff is just so I have a healthier option when I'm on the go. So I'm an Alaskan truck driver. So if I get called out for a job just randomly, it's nice to have this stuff put away in the fridge. That way I can just grab it and go. And if I'm out for an extended period of time, I got some healthy snack options. And I also carry some healthy snack options in my to-go bag. And I'll probably be discussing that here in just a little bit. But for now, we're just going to cut these up and get them ready to go in the pan. And, you know, something that's been bugging me here lately is, is since when has getting healthy been such a problem for those people that aren't healthy? Because as soon as I started doing something extreme like the carnivore diet, I got a lot of I got a lot of feedback from the people that are eating unhealthy. They're like, oh, you can't do that. It's going to kill you. Carnivores, that's not unhealthy. That, that's so unhealthy, just eating meat all the time. You got to have fruits and vegetables. Well, I'm finding that to be a little bit the furthest thing from the truth. Um, this is actually helping me regain my health. I mean, everything's been improving. My eyesight, my hearing, you know, dandruff and stuff like that. Granted, I'm I'm bald, but that's just part of being almost 50 years old. So that's not a big deal. And, and I kind of like being bald because I don't like the extra hair. I don't like waking up with bed head. But since I started carnivore, the inflammation, you know, the overall aches and pain, my arthritis is, is gone away. And it's also shown me that other issues, you know, like my neuropathy, that wasn't induced by carnivore. That was something that when I thought back was there for an a very long time. We're talking like, it could have been almost 20 years ago, my neuropathy started in my feet. So, I mean, that's, that's something that's easily uh, shown after doing carnivore for an extended period of time. And there's a lot of other things that just randomly pop up, like eye floaters. When you're doing carnivore, you're getting rid of all of the sugars. You're getting rid of all the overly processed foods and these little black eye floaters that you get from time to time. That comes from sugar. That comes from overly processed food. If you get rid of the sugar, the eye floaters go away. I mean, they're annoying, especially when I was uh, really heavy into all the sugary crap. You know, even, even fruits and some vegetables can create eye floaters. So I just pretty much avoid everything up to this point. It's just like, man, it's like all this stuff that was said to be healthy was actually causing a lot of the problems. So now I just avoid a lot of fruits and vegetables. You know, I might add an onion in or some garlic or some seasoning for flavor, but that's when I'm cooking my meat. And that's about the only time that I add in things. And I feel sorry for my for my family because, you know, they're, they're still eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and unhealthy snacks. And they're constantly suffering from gas. Now, since I started carnivore, I don't have, you know, gas. Like I just ate a whole can of baked beans, you know, like we used to do when we were younger. But... Or if I were to eat random vegetables like Brussels sprouts or cabbage or uh, stuff like that. Now, I'm not an advocate for all vegetables are bad, by the way. I don't believe that all vegetables are out there to kill us. I don't believe that all vegetables are bad for everybody in the universe. 
I just know what vegetables do to me personally, and they really screw me up. So just by taking out the vegetables, focusing on, you know, natural meats and fats and stuff like that, and the fats is what I run on for energy throughout the day. I don't get tired like everybody else, you know, they start out their morning with a, with a really screwing up their, <clears throat> really screwing up their coffee. They just start out their whole day messing it up right here. This is the first thing they usually screw up by adding in, you know, a whole bunch of sugar, adding in creamer, uh, of the artificial creamer that is just horrible for you, by the way. And as soon as I got rid of that stuff, I noticed a change. I also noticed a change before that when I got rid of all the sodas out of my life. So no more soda pop, no more high fructose corn syrup from that part. But then I was noticing that some of my additional ingredients, like let's say ranch dressing or some barbecue sauce, ketchup, uh, some mayonnaise products, and some specific other products, were they all contained high fructose corn syrup. So that was still getting into my system, you know, in hidden ways. And if you were eating like box cereal, for instance, a lot of that stuff is mislabeled. It's not heart healthy. It's got a lot of other issues going on. So you got to learn, you got to flip around the package, understand all of your ingredients, and then hopefully that'll help you, you know, maintain a little bit healthier lifestyle. But one of my biggest problems was lost my train of thought. I saw a heart pop up on the screen. We got people in here. I'm going to say hi real quick. Hi floaters. I'm on lunch break and jumped in for a few minutes. Hey, I thank you there. I appreciate you jumping in. Uh, let's see, Trailer Trash. I love that name, Trailer Trash. I live in a mobile home here in Alaska. It's like it's a 1975 Redmond trailer. It's really small. It's really unique. That's, that's kind of what I love about it. And if I want to rip down a wall, I own it. So it's fun. Uh, let's see. Got a lot of stuff popping up here real quick. Uh, Sunshine Alaska, let's all give them a thumbs up. Hey, I appreciate all the extra support. Uh, Lisa, blessed life. I appreciate you jumping in. Um, today, we're just making basic carnivore snacks for on the go. And the reason I make these things is to keep me away from all the other crap at the convenience store. Because just going to a convenience store, that was a problem. And it is a problem. If, you, if you're on a healthier lifestyle, you can understand. As soon as you walk in the grocery store, there's the options are only on the outer rim of the store. If you start walking down the center aisles, you can just so much stuff is overly processed. It's unhealthy. Um, the majority of the items in the freezer aisles, the same thing. We've got a lot of problems with the food here in the United States, and we need to just start focusing on eating healthy and hopefully trying to stay healthy. But it's, it, it's a struggle and it just pisses me off to holy high hell when these people that are, that are just eating McDonald's and stuff like that come up to me and they're like, oh, you, you shouldn't be eating that way. That's not good for you. Nonsense. You, dude, you're eating McDonald's, freaking burgers and yuck. Come on now. That's got to be serious. You know, I've lost over 130 pounds in the last 46 weeks. I didn't do that all on the carnivore diet. I started the carnivore diet back in, I think, last September. But still, I've been losing weight. I've been regaining a lot of health. The carnivore diet, you lose inches over pounds, which is fantastic. Who doesn't want to lose inches around the waistline? I mean, that's where most of us are focused on anyways, is trying to get rid of the gut, the midsection. And there's other fat deposits when you're morbidly obese. You get the fat here on the underarms. You get it on the inner thighs. It's just annoying, and I'm sick and tired of it. And I'm also just sick and tired of the people that are just like, man, you're doing the wrong thing. And I challenge anybody at any time to tell me I'm doing it wrong. Give me a good reason why. And I might consider it. So far, since I've been doing this journey, nobody has ever been able to say, well, you're doing it wrong. Not even my doctor. Even my doctor, you know, they, they roll their eyes when they hear you're doing a specific diet. It doesn't matter what you say you're doing. Because they know nine times out of ten that the patient that comes into them is lying about everything. You know, oh, yeah, I'm doing a keto diet and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, you might be doing a couple keto things here and there, but then you're wrecking it up on the side. And that doesn't allow anything, even on a ketogenic diet, to work correctly. Same goes for a carnivore diet, because ultimately the carnivore diet is like an elimination. You're getting rid of the ultra-processed foods. You're getting rid of all the garbage, all the nonsense. And then all of a sudden you're, you're seeing benefits within a week. You know, younger teens are using the carnivore diet to get rid of facial acne. They're getting rid of 
early onset type anxiety and depression issues. And it's great for that because if I wasn't getting over my anxiety, do you think I would really hit that button on this camera right here and hit record and get out here in front of everybody? Because this stuff works. If carnivore didn't work, I wouldn't be out here talking like this. I wouldn't be able to hold my train of thought. I wouldn't be able to, you know, express my opinions and stuff like that. And if anybody were to comment down here, I would be distracted. And I'm going to take a quick look, see who's in here. Uh, Janet Griffith, hello from Dayton Beach, Florida. I appreciate you dropping in. Uh, Yohus, I'm probably botching that name up there. Uh, my name is Yohus. Him, her. That's in a different language. I don't know how to pronounce that. I apologize there, but I, I do want to say hi. Uh, Remington, everyone say hi. In the trap. I don't know what that means, but I'm okay with this. Uh, let's see. Kenny Duncan. Hi, I'm back. I appreciate you coming back. Uh, let's see. Donna Couture says hi from Massachusetts. And, and that's the one thing I love about this community. I also love these vertical live streams because they just give us a reach all the way around the globe. I got people talking to me from Singapore, uh, Costa Rica. I mean, just everywhere. China, Russia, Ukraine. I mean, it's just it's just been an amazing thing so far. And it's, it's just fun to do to get out here you know, show people what I'm doing with the carnivore diet and try to help people understand that it's not all wackadoodle nonsense. Now, unfortunately, it takes a lot of science for people to actually wrap their head around the idea of just eating meats and fats. But that science is now starting to become, uh, it's ever evolving, but it's also starting to become more available. So there's a lot of information that goes into just eating an all meat type diet. There's millions of people out there right now doing the carnivore diet, and I'm friends with a lot of them. You know, as I got involved in sharing my weight loss journey, you know, they started, you know, poking at me because I was doing keto for a while. I was having problems with keto because there were so many aspects to doing a keto diet that got me really confused. Um, my weight was all over the place just doing a straight keto diet. There was a lot of keto options in the stores that are, like I said before, they're mislabeled. And it's really hard to do anything specific uh, when everything's confusing, it's mislabeled. And if we get out here on the internet and we start looking for health advice, we get so much conflicting information. That's where I was when I started. I was trying to lose weight, 435 pounds, miserable cow. I was hormonal. I was distracted. I was sugar addicted, carb addicted. I couldn't form a complete sentence, let alone talk like this. It was, it was crazy. And when I look back at my previous videos, I'm like, oh, dude. You really sucked at making videos. You really sucked at communicating. I'm surprised my wife now hasn't divorced me because she went through all of the struggles of me, you know, being somewhat kind of healthy and then all of a sudden getting really depressed, unhealthy with a lot of anxiety. And I, I'm just here to say that carnivore can help with all of that. And there's a lot of science wrapped around that, you know, with, with anxiety, depression, schizophrenia even is on the table for uh, things that the carnivore lifestyle can improve. I need to get these in the pan because this is kind of what I got going on here. So basically what I have here is I'm making a simple on the go carnivore snack. Uh, this is basically, you know, ham all cubed up. Uh, and this is here is reindeer sausage. And I like to cut it at kind of a diagonal. And I basically do it this way uh, because when I'm on the go, I can just open a Tupperware container and I can just pop one of these in and snack on it. Now this, all this meat here is pre-cooked, but what I want to do is, is put it in a pan with some natural fat, sear it on each side, and that way it makes a yummier bite when you're on the go, because it's the fats that run us. You know, the protein is absolutely helpful, but the fats is what run us. And pork, I try to stay away from pork for the most part, but this over here is reindeer sausage, and it's full of all kinds of different stuff like organ meat, natural fats, uh, some of the connective tissue in a reindeer. So yeah, it's some pretty good stuff here. And when I started my weight loss journey, I was actually eating, you know, three of these reindeer sausages in one meal. And that was all I was eating. I wasn't eating anything else. I was just eating three reindeer sausage. Uh, and I had put some barbecue sauce on it. You know, at that time, I wasn't super into keto. I wasn't super into carnivore, but I was losing weight just eating reindeer sausages as a meal just to give you guys a little perspective as to what i do so yeah we're gonna head on over to the stove because the stove is always a fun place for me and you know i did have a question because i went and i tried cleaning the stove 
<clears throat> now this is the new pan that I'm talking about here. I bought this in combination with this one here. But this one's got a white coating and you can see what happens to it over time. Now this one, I don't know why it has a black coating, but this all, this all came together. And, uh, and I haven't even taken this out of the package and run it through its courses yet. I did clean it beforehand, but I made a good faith effort to clean my stove yesterday and I can't get that stuff off. I don't know. You guys got any tricks or secrets? I used easy off. I used a lot of hot water. I used all kinds of stuff and trying to get the burners lit after the fa fact was a real headache. So what we're going to do here, we're going to get this pan heated up. And then I'm going to use some bacon grease. I always keep some bacon grease handy uh, for situations like this. I'm just going to add that on into the pan. Let that get heated up. Yay. I'm going to make a mess. Hopefully I don't get it on the camera lens. Almost dripped it off the side. Oh, well. Okay, there we go. Perfect. We're going to give that a second to heat up a little bit. And then we're going to start adding in the meat. So, yeah, this is just a super fun, easy way of making an already yummy snack like sausages or ham. You can do this with hot dogs. Um, I've even done this with burger meat. You know, made some little little burger bites and stuff like that. This is just on the go type stuff. And we gotta let that get get nice and ripping hot before we can actually get a halfway decent sear on there. Because getting the sear is where you're gonna gain a lot of the flavors. And then the bacon grease itself is gonna a lot of that's gonna stick to the sausages. And that's gonna be, you know, what I'm gonna be using for energy throughout the day if I should happen to be a little bit tired or uh have some situations or anything like that. Carnivore Scott, hey, I appreciate blowtorch. You want me to use a blowtorch on my stove to clean off the stuff? I don't know what you mean there. Hey, I'll need to smash the like button. I appreciate it for the extra support, Scott. You're amazing. I love it when you invite me onto your YouTube channel and we do our random live streams. It's, it's so much fun. But, all right, let's get a Tupperware out. Oh, I'm running out of the big ones. I'm going to have to use a smaller one. I think I can get most of it in there. But like I said, this is just simple on-the-go type carnivore snacks and treats. I think we're getting up to temperature here. We're going to put one of these little guys in there and see what happens. See if I can get it to sizzle. Not really that much yet. But yeah, we're just going to lay these out. Because you want to try to get the sear on each side of the meat. The best you can if you can only get the sear on one side that that's perfectly fine but this is going to be delicious okay there we got the sizzle going you guys are like asmr man this is your this is your stream because we're going to have some sizzling food going on here and this is a new pan so i don't know how it's going to work i don't trust my pans until i usually run them a couple times and then i know exactly what they're going to do to my food but yeah and look, no gloves. It's my house. I don't have to wear gloves. We're not preparing this for the rest of the world. We're preparing this type of stuff for me. And that's it. And I can fit almost all of them in here. Pretty close. I can probably make some more room. There we go. I just have a couple ends left. I'm not going to do the ham right now, of course. Because I'm just focused on getting the sausage all browned up. But yeah, if you're on the carnivore diet and you're just looking for some simple ideas, uh, maybe some solutions to try to, you know, take with you on the go in the car, because a lot of you guys are on the road. I totally get it. I know what it's like. I'm not busy this time of year, but I'm normally busy, especially when I'm working. And here in Alaska, we've got a little bit of snow. So we're just waiting on the snow to melt. And then uh, hopefully we can start up with gravel hauling and stuff like that real soon. But as a truck driver that's on the go, we need to try to stay away from a lot of the crazy stuff that's in the convenience stores, stuff that's in the center aisles of the stores, other stuff that's like um, just naturally unhealthy. And that's what we tend to get into a lot is the unhealthy type snacks. I'm grabbing my to-go bag because somebody did ask me, hey, what are you taking your to-go bag to work? And uh, I just got a new bag, by the way, so I'm pretty happy with it. We're going to flip this around. We're going to oh, gonna go ahead over here and check on these uh, 
I want them to burn because when I start getting out of my rambling, oh yeah, there we go. We're starting to get a nice browning on the sausages. This only takes a couple minutes, guys. It's super simple, super easy. And we're looking for this like nice golden brown here. We're not trying to burn them. So we just flip them over real quick. And I got the temperature up way too high. So yeah, we're just gonna flip these over and you see how it's nice and golden brown. It kind of captivates all the flavor and it seals in a lot of the flavor from the reindeer sausage, which is just amazing. Now you can do this with any type of sausage. You can do it with kielbasa, hot dogs, you know, whatever. Just do whatever works for you and what doesn't make your tummy upset throughout the day. Because the last thing you want to do is, is be at work and have gut issues. But even bacon bites, like I'll cut up bacon in really tiny slivers and I'll use those because that seems to work really well. But like these ham pieces work good. Now I've done sausage before last summer. That was something I took with me. Now another thing that I used to take with me quite often was uh, hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs, three of them, that's all you need. Three hard boiled eggs for lunch, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about nothing else. <clears throat> I mean, hard boiled eggs is a meal. All right, you're gonna actually start taking some of these out. They are looking good, man. I can't wait to actually snack on a couple of these because I, I love reindeer sausage. I don't know if you guys have this, this option available in the lower 48. That's where a lot of you are from or even in other countries. Now we do have a, a, a halal store here, not too far away. And they have random meats in that store uh, like goat and lamb. Now I haven't been able to afford to purchase lamb meat. I would love to. I think I've had lamb in the past, and I hear it's really, really good. I hear it's really healthy for you, um, but I have never, it, that I'm aware of, I have never tried goat meat, and I kind of want to try it. I don't know, I don't know what they make, I um, can't think of what it's called now. Uh, it's that really thin sliced meat. It's like an Indian type delicacy. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Uh, so whatever they make a gyro out of. If you guys know, if, is that lamb? That might be lamb, thinly sliced lamb. I don't know. I haven't been able to get out of the house much because I just don't have the money to go shopping. I don't have the money to go venture out. And I'm kind of okay with that because when I go out to eat, I tend to have problems on the carnivore diet because, you know, if I order, like I went to Golden Corral. So that was where I had some issues. Um, when I went to Golden Corral and I was just getting the steak and I was getting all the meat options And I think some of the meat options that they had there uh, were actually covered in stuff that wasn't exactly healthy for me so and I and I'm very sensitive to things like uh, soybean oil cor corn oils vegetable oils uh, Pretty much every vegetable I've come across except for like an onion or garlic or anything like that That's about the only things that I'm not super sensitive to so, but all the other stuff, yeah, totally. Just screw me up the holy high heck. Now, years ago, I was told to eat a lot of vegetables. You know, I needed to change up my diet. I was on the standard American diet, the SAD diet. And, you know, the doctors and my health coaches and stuff like that were like, dude, you need to eat more vegetables. Okay, I tried that. Well, I had a lot of problems. When I started eating a lot of vegetables besides the fact that I was hungry all the time. I was always hungry. It was horrible. And then I had other problems on the other end. I'll flip you around and show you guys what's going on here. I don't know why I got to press that twice. But yeah, I got the ham in the pan. Uh, this is what the sausage looks like. And I apologize if the sizzling is a little bit too loud. But if you're, if you're a carnivore, you guys know what I'm talking about. You like to hear that sizzle. That means, that means food's cooking. That means you're gonna be able to eat soon. And I got a runaway. Oh no. Can I get it? Oh, I got it. Okay. Now this stuff is browning up super fast. I mean, the live stream's only been going on for like 24 minutes. Uh, but the overall cook time of this is about 10 or 15 minutes, and then you can just put it in a to-go box. 
you know, right there, put a lid on it, toss it in the fridge, and it's a super safe way to know that you have an on-the-go snack or an on-the-go type meal when you leave the house. And once it's cooked, this will this will store in the fridge for you know three to four days safely. And you don't have to do anything to it. You just, just let it sit there. Oh yeah, that's looking nice and golden brown. And we're almost done. So that's just one of the mini snacks. And I hope everybody had a good Easter, by the way, because I know Easter was a was a struggle for some some of the people in the carnivore community. Um, because we tend to get into get ourselves into situations where there's just a lot of sugary stuff going on. And then it creates a debate of, you know, that's not good for you type stuff. And we try to, we try to not push um, the carnivore way of eating on people because, you know, it's got to be your choice. You know, this isn't going to work unless it's your choice. That's super important to remember, especially when trying to, you know, talk with family members. I was, I did a live stream yesterday and I talked about how we could better communicate with, with people that are <clears throat> they're, they're struggling they're struggling with weight uh, they haven't yet <clears throat> they haven't yet got a diagnosis and that's a problem and we feel bad for them we want to teach them you know give them suggestions but we don't want to be a badger and so far the the best inf you know, information I got because I, you know, I, was, I was sincere I was reaching out I was like man how do I how do I talk to my family or how do I talk to other friends and staying silent until there's an opportunity, you know, that God wants us to actually communicate what we're doing with them. You know, that was basically the answer I got. So, you know, if my son comes to me and he says, well, I'm having problems with this or that, or my wife, or one of my daughters, or one of my co-workers, you know, because when people ask me how I'm getting healthy, how I'm losing weight, why I look so different compared to what I did a year ago, you know, I just, I tell them what I'm doing. I tell them I'm eating meat. Now, I find it funny that when I talk to the majority of people outside this house and they ask me, wow, how did you how did you lose the weight? And I tell them, like, especially uh, our Asian community here in Alaska, you know, I tell them what I'm doing. I'm eating meat. And they look at me and they just nod their head. They're like, yeah, you know, you know, you're doing good. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's what a lot of them do is they eat a lot of meat. They eat a lot of protein. Um, they do eat some other stuff but their main focus is on protein, uh, meats and fats, for instance. And that's how they stay skinny and healthy. I mean, because it's, it's always made me wonder, like, hey, man, how are these people doing it, too? It's like, but since there's a language barrier there, you know, between the Asian communities and, and us, you know, that speak mainly English <clears throat> or a little bit of native uh if you're Alaskan native, and I don't speak it well, by the way, I, I can only speak a couple words here and there, but uh, I never had a lot of time to focus on Alaskan native language, even though I would love to, but there's a lot of other stuff going on here. But yeah, I mean, when you, when you start talking to them and you tell them about how you're losing weight, how you're staying healthy, you know, you know they, they applaud you. They give you that thumbs up. From across the room and now it might not be a thumbs up it might just be a you know a sideways smile but, but they know you know that you're finally starting to figure it out now something else i noticed you know once i started doing keto and once i started doing doing the carnivore diet is that you start to recognize people that are doing a similar diet to what you're doing you start to recognize them in the store not always in a creepy way like you're looking at at what they got in their shopping cart but that's a good indicator it's like hey man this person's got a full shopping cart full of meat or this person's got a full shopping cart just full of whole foods in general and i think that's where a lot of the benefits are is the whole foods uh let's see hey i need to do this for carnivore scott because he is a very trusted member of the community and uh and I, and I try to uh, I try to add moderators as I go because you guys are you know you're not always in the same place at the same time and it's super helpful to have a good moderator especially in one of these vertical live streams because these streams get super spammed like crazy spammed because these these videos go out to everybody you know not just my subscribers and and that's the whole point of these live streams 
is to hopefully get out in front of more people <clears throat> and talk about the carnivore diet and the benefits of the carnivore diet and what I talk about and relatively uh, relative to what I have on my channel. Uh, I got my dog over here. I got my flat tire dog. So what I got here, let's see if I can get that in the picture there. So this is my bag. I just bought a new bag, but whenever we Alaskans leave the house, it's a good idea to have a good solid bag with us that's just full of all of the essentials for when we leave the house. Now, one of the main things this bag is for is carrying extra water. Now, I have three of these containers. They're all different colors. These here are just to carry regular drinking water. And the reason they're different colors is this is the one I use for my electrolytes before I leave for work. I use this container, I fill it up uh, with a little bit of salt, uh, some no salt for potassium, apple cider vinegar, some lemon juice. I fill it with water and it just, after it's full, then I start shaking the heck out of it. And I'll use this in replacement of an energy drink of, you know, like drinking Red Bull or uh, one of those unhealthy morning coffees, the lattes and stuff like that. We tend to get at Starbucks or here in Alaska, we have a lot of these little coffee stands. And I used to be an addict for those. And you're, you're talking like seven to $10 a drink because it's, it's always polite if you got a barista to tip them a couple dollars. So the drink might be seven bucks, you tip them a couple bucks, you're getting pretty close to $10. And then we usually buy sugary snacks while we're there. But I use this in replace of that morning coffee. Um, if I can, I'll make it through until noon and then I'll start drinking this. But as a general rule, this is what helps keep me on my water intake for weight loss. Because if you don't have about a gallon of water in your way from the house for approximately 10 hours, um, you're going to be off, you're going to be dehydrated, uh, you're going to have issues. Now another item that I always carry in my bag, and I just started carrying these just recently, but these right here, super healthy snack, similar to doing something like this, but this stuff really helps. It's always good to have, you know, extra stuff in your bag too, because this is Alaska, anything can happen here. So <clears throat> I like to package everything in a Ziploc bag for to-go stuff because sometimes these bags can get wet. So I carry extra toe warmers. Uh, this is just some random shoelaces because we have boot failures all the time here in Alaska. You know, because when you're out in the field and your boot laces go to heck, always carry extra safety glasses. This is a fantastic light. Because here in Alaska in the wintertime, it's dark. If you don't have a backup light for, you know, when your cell phone might get damaged or fail, and you got to look around in a dark place, it's fantastic having an extra light on hand. So yeah, just fun stuff here. I got extra safety glasses in case I'm working with somebody else that might need them doing the same job. Because if you're crawling around under a big truck uh, and looking up, stuff falls in your eyes. It's no fun. Thankfully, I haven't had to use these. Um, these are new boot laces for the boots that I have. They go along with the other boot laces. Now, another thing we carry in Alaska uh, for our to-go type stuff is a bunch of assorted tools, little tiny screwdrivers that you might not have on hand as a general rule. <clears throat> and lately I've been needing this. This is just a tape measure because sometimes you'll have an issue on the highway. Gotta have a tape measure. They need to know specifics uh, before they send the truck out for you. And then other random, like this is a multi-purpose screwdriver. Inside here is a bunch of bits uh, with different size bits. Some pliers. That pretty much covers that pocket of the bag. And uh, let's see, what else do I got in here? I always got stuff. Now, of course, you always carry your extra phone chargers and connectors and stuff like that. Now, if you're a carnivore, you know what this is about. These have been kicking around in my bag for a long time. You gotta have tooth flossers. Because if you don't have tooth flossers and that meat gets stuck in your teeth, it's horribly annoying. And I always carry around spare, spare vaping products. And I think in here we have an assortment of different type of, you know, utility knives. Uh, this one here is a razor blade because sometimes you have to open boxes while you're out on the road. And this is one of the famous random multi-tools you know, extra pliers, extra tools. This is just the basics of stuff 
uh, that we tend to carry here in Alaska when we go to work. Now it's just it's just super helpful stuff, you know, that keeps us safer out on the road. And sometimes we need to we're required to fix our own problems up here, you know, just like packing away, you know, extra meat, extra food items, and stuff like that. We got to be prepared for a little bit of everything up here. That's just basically an inside look as to, you know, what I'm carrying. Now I got another front pocket here. I just packed this bag not too long ago. I don't know exactly what's in here. Okay, here, we got some more tooth flossers. Like I said, super handy for on the go. Got some other items packed up in Ziploc bags. We got black Sharpies for being on the road. You gotta mark stuff at times. Super helpful. Um, I always like to carry a little bit of Sudafed. Now this stuff works pretty good during the day. It doesn't make you loopy. So I don't worry about that too much. And then of course I have more uh, random electrical connections to either attach extra media or if I'm stuck on a layover or something like that, I can I can be better entertained. I can connect to the radio, uh, Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And then a bunch of assortments of, I have an emergency inhaler by the way. I don't use it anymore. Since I started Carnivore, I haven't needed to use my emergency inhaler for anything because Carnivore reduces the inflammation uh, that's in the lungs that creates uh, those asthmatic type situations. I didn't know that. That was a super bonus, you know, when I started doing the diet because a lot of these things around the carnivore diet just randomly happen for, we, we don't know why. I mean, after, after talking to other people, we kind of figured it out. Uh, I hope that doesn't make a whole lot of noise for you guys. But it's like all of a sudden, you know, things start changing and if we're, we're not part of a community like the carnivore community where we can actually talk to one another, and we do. We talk, I talk with everybody that comments, you know, here in the thread, you know, they'll come to my videos. We'll have a discussion on the side about, you know, what's going on with them or what's going on with me. And that's how we come up with these random epiphanies. We're like, wow, you know, that happened because of something I have been doing with the carnivore diet. I've reduced the inflammation. Um, I've reduced all kinds of stuff. The chances of me getting random cancers now has dropped considerably. Now, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of the cancer patients, uh, they get prescribed a keto type diet, no carb, no sugar type diet. I mean, right off the bat. So if they're prescribing a diet, a keto type diet, which carnivore is, uh, because you're in perpetual ketosis once you start getting dramatically serious with it, and you kick out all the sugars and the carbs, you know, your body's in autophagy, you're in ketosis, and that's what you need to be in if you're trying to avoid cancer in the first place. So if, you, if you're diagnosed with cancer, they're going to try to get you on a healthier type diet. So why not diagnose yourself with a healthier type diet before cancer becomes an issue? Because right now, prostate cancer is going through the roof in this country. Pancreatic cancer is going through the roof in this country. Uh, the chances of surviving those is like 10 or 20 percent. Those 10 or 20 percent are very lucky, you know, to actually survive that type of stuff. Now, I do know a friend of mine, he's doing really well. He's got a he's got a particular type of cancer on that on that plant on that area. And he's, he's doing the carnivore diet. He's the one that got me started on the carnivore diet when I started losing weight, sharing my journey. And things were dramatically improved after I just gave it a shot. I didn't think, I thought carnivore was like vegan diet. I thought it was all voodoo. I thought every, every bit of it, it's like, it, it's voodoo. And then when I started trying it, I was having problems, but I was already on the platform here at YouTube and I was talking about my weight loss journey. I was talking about my experience, you know, hey, I'm trying carnivore, but I also did the same thing when I was doing keto type stuff. I was just explaining how things went. People were helping me. You know, and that's, that's what the community is about. That's what I support, is trying to help people understand, you know, no matter what you're doing, you know, because if you're doing keto, yeah, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's confusing. Don't believe when you see keto on a package. I mean, you can't hardly walk into a store and see carnivore as a label. I mean, it's, it's rare if you do see it at all. They don't really have much here, you know, for carnivore type snacks. And we have to, you know, pick and choose our poison you know, pretty specifically. <clears throat> but all three of these water bottles here equal approximately a gallon. Like I said, the white ones are just water. 
this one is where I pack my electrolytes. And I try to drink this one, like if I go to work at six o'clock in the morning, I try to have this one gone by nine o'clock. And then I'll drink my second one, you know, for the next three hours up until lunchtime. And if you get hungry, this is another great option where you start feeling hungry, you want a snack, drink a good portion of a water bottle and it'll cure that hunger sensation. It goes away. And this, this is one of the things I used to use when I first started losing weight was is now I have my water rations for the day. It just made sense to stock it like this. Yeah, it's a lot of water. But if you don't have enough water, you're not losing weight anyways. Your body is holding on to the water. It's saying, no, you're not gonna lose weight today. So having your water intake correct is just as important as the foods you eat. Because without the water, the foods don't get absorbed correctly. It just doesn't work that way. So you could eat these foods and they're just gonna pack on as extra weight or they're just gonna run through the gut and aimlessly out the other end. But yeah, you gotta have the water for, to get the absorption of any nutrients from either plant matter or meats. It's super important stuff, guys. All right, let's see what we got in here. Uh, Carnivore Scott, Donna Couture, yes, we are blessed, uh, but that is the whole state. Uh, that reason to move here as a retired guy. All right, Leo Hernandez, uh, water weight. Yeah, water weight's super huge, but did you know that you retain water when you don't drink enough. If you don't drink enough water, that water that's in your body is being held onto. Your body is saying, we need to hold on to this because you're not drinking enough water. So as soon as you start drinking enough water, all of a sudden you're gonna start urinating more and then it's gonna start using the water as it needs to go. But sometimes our cells get a little bit stubborn. They don't wanna actually absorb the water that we're putting in there. Uh, that's where the electrolytes come in and that little bit of potassium with the no salt you know that helps the cell absorb the water that we're putting in our body that makes things work because without water yeah you're going to gain more weight without water because the body's refusing to let you lose anything because it's afraid it's not going to get what it needs to survive i want to try one of these because these look delicious now when you cook these in bacon fat it actually gets a little bit of the bacon fat on there and the bacon fat, you know, along with the protein is super helpful for energy, especially when you're on the go. Oh boy, that's boss. That's good there. Now I didn't put any spices. There's no sauce on this whatsoever. Super juicy bites. Oh yeah, that is good stuff there. Basic carnivore snack 101. I mean, you don't have to go out to a store and get a steak. Ribeye steaks are overrated. You know, ground beef, no different than a steak. It's just a steak ground up into beef. So I eat a lot of 80-20 burger patties, and I make that from a big giant 10-pound chub. Super delicious, super nutritious. Um, I've been known to eat up to two pounds in one sitting. Now, depending on how I feel, I will eat meat until it just doesn't taste good anymore. That's when I know when to stop. And especially for me, I need that signal because I am a binge eater. I mean, I could eat all day long, but now that I started the carnivore diet, I don't eat as much as I used to. I don't really need to be packing these snacks. And the only reason I'm talking about these snacks today is a lot of you that are out there, you're trying to transition into a diet like this. It's not easy for everybody. It wasn't easy for me to get this far along with the carnivore diet. I wasn't able to get up to 98%. Uh, I was able to get up to about 90% for a long time. And a lot of you have heard this come out of my mouth, 90-10 eating principle, uh, which is 90% meats and fats, 10% I love my life. So that could include a variation of a bunch of things, but whatever it is, I tried to keep it keto friendly. Now, a lot of people out there, they're doing exactly that. I've met a lot of them. I know a lot, a lot of people that do that here uh, in the Anchorage area in the Alaska area. And I also know a lot of people online that are eating a similar way, 90-10. But I wanted to see if I could get further benefits by trying to be more strict with the carnivore diet. And my answer, my conclusion, since I've been doing this for three or four weeks is yes, you can get further benefits. I was already light years ahead of where I was, you know, back when I was doing 90-10. But this here, you know, this type of snacks, this type of eating, you know, 100% meats and fats and, and like, maybe 2% off the rail type stuff. And the 2% that 
that I allow in there is like, you know, basic, basic, you know, uh, why is the word slipping my brain? Um, ingredients like seasonings, uh, seasonings, maybe a little bit of onion. If I'm making a soup, I'm going to put some celery in there. But these are relatively harmless type vegetables, and you don't have to specifically eat those vegetables uh, to stay on your carnivore plane. But it's nice to have a little bit of flavor from time to time. This is also why you use uh, beef tallow, bacon fat, uh, natural butter. Stay away from the margarine, guys. Margarine is poison. I wish we knew that, you know, when they first started pushing that stuff on us as kids, because I remember the tubs of margarine, the big giant tubs we used to use to make macaroni and cheese. I had no idea we were poisoning ourselves back then. Also, the Teflon pans, you know, when those things came out, I'm almost 50 years old this month. When those Teflon pans came out, there was no warning labels on any of that stuff. So, yeah, we were making macaroni and cheese and just stirring it with a spoon, a hard metal spoon. And we had all these little black flakes in there, and we were eating that crap. Yeah, so I'm the generation that was eating Teflon flakes that they warn us about now. I mean, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I'm doing much better now. But amazing, the stuff that we've been through to get to this point. Now, another thing I've discussed just recently is that the majority of people out there in the universe of, holy cow, I need to change something in my life, they're not going to change. They're not going to change until they get a diagnosis. They're not going to change until they're so morbidly obese. It's hard for them to go to the bathroom. I was there. I had a hard time wiping my own behind. Every time I got in the shower, it was scary. I was afraid I was going to fall down. I was so fat that when I took a bath in the bathtub when my family was gone, I was trapped. I couldn't get out of the bathtub. It, I was in the bathtub for an hour and a half, just trying to roll around in there and get my footing underneath me to get up because your feet are so swollen with all the water in your legs. You, you got no feeling in your feet. And when you're trying to get yourself up out of a bathtub, you can get up on your knees and it's going to hurt. But then trying to get your foot up underneath you and actually push off the floor, that's a scary situation. And then I was so out of shape, everything was so out of aligned, that just rolling my body over the edge and trying to fall on the floor, that wasn't an option either. I mean, I eventually got up enough strength and enough stability in the tub. After it dried out enough, I got some decent traction on my foot and I was able to stand up. But once I got up out of that bathtub, I was injured. My legs hurt, my knees hurt. I had bruises on my knees for about two weeks. It was horrible. And my cell phone, was sitting right here on this table when I was way back there in the bathroom. I was in a bad, bad situation. I, I mean, just imagine your family's gone. They're out of town for another two to three weeks. You're stuck in a freaking bathtub because you're morbidly obese and can't hardly move, let alone breathe when you sleep because your sleep apnea is so bad. That's a scary situation. I don't mind sharing these experiences because it's true. It's what happened to me. It's what people need to understand because there's other people out here struggling to lose weight. They're struggling to understand basic health, basic nutrition, basic ingredients on the back of the packages because they just haven't sat down long enough to take time. Now, a lot of the distractions we have is right here. Most of you are holding your cell phone. You might be watching me on a cell phone device right now, some of them on a TV. But my thing is, is that it's, it's a distraction. You're not taking your time and using it wisely. And I don't mean click off the video right now because what I'm saying is important stuff to consider after the video. Because I noticed for myself, I was sitting here at the table. I was playing nonstop video games all day long. I was eating unhealthy food and snacks. I was getting worse. You know, and when I wanted to make something to eat, it was always something unhealthy. I ate a lot of ramen noodles, sometimes two to three packages of ramen noodles. And then I would add in you know, progresso soup to give it a healthier type flavor. It's, seriously, that was healthier. That was my idea of healthier. When I would go out to McDonald's when I was morbidly obese and just crazy, yeah, my idea of healthy, I'm going to get a Sprite. I'm going to get a Big Mac, and then I'm going to order a quarter pounder, and then I'm going to also order uh, two bacon cheeseburger, two double bacon cheeseburgers, and then I'm going to order a Sprite because a Sprite is healthier than a Coca-Cola or a Dr. Pepper. That was 
how screwed up my mind was working. That's how screwed up a lot of people's minds are working. And even when you go to places like Subway, you know, Subway, eat fresh. You remember that whole, you know, situation where they got us to thinking that, hey, if we go to Subway, we're going to lose weight. Did anybody lose weight eating Subway? Because when I order a foot long, I'm eating the entire foot long. And on top of that, I'm usually getting a Sprite or one of the iced teas. And everything in that, in that machine is full of high fructose corn syrup. And the water is typically city water. It's not filtered. So whatever's in the crap city water is typically just as unhealthy as the soda. So it's a lose situation there. And then their add-ons is the cookies. You know, they got these cookies that are in this nice little convenient thing. You get two or three cookies. And then you usually order two more cookies because that's how we were. You know, sugar addicted, sugar addicts. Uh, no different than if you're addicted to illicit drugs, cocaine, crystal meth, you know, fentanyl, for instance. You just got to have more. When does, when does the got to have more stop? With a diagnosis. So if you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes or you're diagnosed with, you know, severe cancer or something like that, or even the inkling you might have cancer, oh, that's going to be the point where you're going to turn around and you're going to face yourself in the mirror and be like, oh, I got to do something or I'm going to die. Now, what truly broke my heart was when I met a lot of cancer patients that needed help. Uh, they needed help with stuff from around the house. And then I see them, you know, eating specific ways and, you know, they're still drinking soda pops. And it just crushed me to see that, you know, because I'm very empathetic uh, towards those people that, that can't help themselves. And then we had this we had this conversation about what the soda does, what all the unhealthy stuff does you know, the soda and, and other stuff that was in that person's fridge, because they were curious. They're like, well, what would you do? You're getting healthier. You lost all this weight. What do you suggest I do? And the first thing out of my mouth was you need to ditch the soda pop. And it, it broke my heart to see how crushed he was. He was like, I can't give up my soda pop. And what he did after the fact, I'm sure, is he still drank soda. Uh, his, his cancer got worse. I mean, he was just going out of this world on his own terms, which I respect. I respect that from anybody that wants to go out of this world, you know, in their own particular way. It's just, it was just sad to me to see that happening and know that after I left, it was probably just going to be a downward spiral. And, you know, it's just disappointing. I mean, all right, let's see what we got on here. Kimberly W., our... Are used to love the tuna sandwich from Subway with a lot of veggies on it. Never lost weight on it, though. Um, okay, so the tuna at Subway. Have you ever noticed that it's brown and dingy? Tuna fish is not supposed to be brown, ever. It's not supposed to be brown. It's supposed to be white. I mean, pink or red. Uh, in most good situations, the tuna fish at, at Subway has been debated if it's even a real real tuna and it's been proven yes that it's actually tuna fish but it's not the tuna fish you want to be consuming in my opinion because tuna fish is not supposed to be that color and i too had the tuna fish there i don't even know what they put in you know for the other ingredients that goes into their tuna fish uh you know mayonnaise you know for instance uh, what kind of oils were in the mayonnaise now the bread yeah that fresh baked bread that's whatever if fresh break who cares if it's got a lot of extra ingredients in it it might not be the best idea. And as we found out, the flatbread over the years has got uh, more of an impact on our system, the flatbread. And, you know, it's sold to us as like, oh, it's less bread because it's flat. Well, it's just denser bread. It's the same, if not more, you know, nonsense in the flatbread. So, yeah, we're not any better off with that. And then, then there's the chips, you know, sun chips. I used to believe that sun chips was a healthy option, you know, when eating at Subway. But the sun chips are just full of vegetable oils, you know, corn oil, canola oil, you know, just, just stuff that creates inflammation. You know, once you get rid of the inflammatory products out of your diet and you recognize what the inflammatory products are, you know, all the corn, all the corn, if it says corn, run away, you know. And then I have, so I have this syrup in the house and I was just going through it the other day because the kids like to have pancakes, waffles and stuff like that. You know, I'm not going to shut them down on everything but I was looking at the package and it says no high fructose corn syrup I believe it's a log cabin brand it says no high fructose corn syrup you flip the package around the first ingredient number one ingredient is corn syrup where do you get high fructose corn syrup it's corn syrup and then it's processed more so it's just another way of tricking you to believing packaging labels 
as, oh, okay, that's got to be safe. It's got no high fructose corn syrup. Then it's got corn syrup as the first ingredient. They're just thinking we're a bunch of idiots. I mean, the people that make these products rely on how stupid the sugar addicted, the carb addicted people are. Because when you see a label like keto or heart healthy or no high fructose corn syrup added, they think you're going to take that package at face value. You're never going to flip it around. You're not going to look at the ingredients, let alone take the time to understand what the ingredients are, or what they do to your body. That's how stupid they think we are. It's time that we change all that. Flip the package around. If it's got an ingredient list this long, think about what you're doing, what you're purchasing. You know, find an ingredient list with something like this long. You know, even if you're buying like fruit products, you know, like apricots or something. Okay, it's got apricots, water, natural sugar. I'd be more likely to forgive natural sugar than high fructose corn syrup. And I will forgive natural sugar in some basic products, like maybe uh, this new Sriracha Tabasco sauce. It's got a very limited amount of sugar in it. We're also not drowning our meat in that. So the impact of whatever natural sugar is in that one particular sauce, I can forgive that. I'm not going to not buy the product just because of that. There's other sauces that I'll also take and I'll consume at a time, but I don't drown. I don't ruin it like I ruin a salad with ranch dressing. And we all know what's in ranch dressing. Well, I guess a lot of us don't know what's in ranch dressing because we never read the label. There's high fructose corn syrup in ranch dressing. There's soy in ranch dressing. There's all kinds of other added ingredients in Hidden Valley Ranch Dressing to be specific. Now, there are a little bit healthier ways of making ranch dressing on your own at home. And, and I would suggest that if people are addicted to things like ranch dressing, they go down that route if they have to have the ranch. But here's where they fooled you. Is that there's a little scientist that sits in a room and he's just adding a little bit here and there, trying to get that perfect equation of sweeteners and addictive type substances in there. So you come back for the Hidden Valley Ranch. That's gonna be the first thing on your, on your shopping list is you or your kids are requesting specific sauces like oh I need this because it it tastes a certain way well the, the certain way is the extra added sweeteners that really mess us up and if you're feeding it if your kids are just dumping it on their plate and they have to have ranch dressing every time they eat french fry or every time they eat a piece of pizza or they, they put it on chicken or any type of meat they have to just have ranch dressing you already have a compounding problem that's going on within your own household and we have to control that wisely you know, we have to minimize the amount of these extra ingredients that are getting into our children. And then we complain about stuff like ADHD. You know, autism is its own thing. That's not a result of, you know, too much sugar. That's just the way a person perceives the world differently. And, and people, I know a lot of autistic people, by the way, and they're very, very intelligent. You know, they might lash out a little bit differently, but that's just because of responses from outside elements coming in or the way you might have responded to them in a particular situation. But ADHD, you know, it, it went through the roof, you know, in the mid 80s and 90s because we were consuming more sugar. Everything revolved around sugar, sugar, sugar. We got to have sugar. Go into the ice cream stand. I was just having this conversation on another person's YouTube video today about I kind of miss the ice cream stand. You know, I kind of miss the family adventures going to the ice cream stand. And now we need to think outside the box. But back then, when I was a kid, back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we weren't going to the ice cream stand every single day. If we were to go, it was like maybe once a month, at most once a week. We have to consider that because a lot of us are, you know, in, in a particular age bracket, you know, anywhere from 35 up to 70, 80 years old. And we remember those times. We were extremely healthy back then. And the trips to the ice cream stand was typically after we won a baseball game, you know, soccer, football, everybody won, you know, we'd take a trip on down, it was a nice treat, you know, relax on wine, you know, share gossip about the game that we won. It was a good time. I kind of missed that. But at the same time, I wrecked it throughout the years. So I made that possibility a lot less likely now. And if I were to do it again, you know, venture to an ice cream stand, I would need to be that guy that needs to know, well, hey, what's in the ice cream? You know, is there high fructose corn syrup? Is this naturally made with regular sugar and cream like ice cream was intended? But now it's just a laundry list of stuff. And the cheap ice cream at Walmart is absolutely garbage. It's just, there's just so much stuff in there 
that doesn't belong in there. It's, it's not even ice cream. It shouldn't even be called ice cream. And then they have things called natural flavors. Well, what is the natural flavor? Why can't they just tell us what the natural flavor is and make that an ingredient? It's because they think we're idiots. They think we're fools. So just, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, let's see, what do we got going on here? Amber, let's see, Eunice, no one should ever consume that junk. Everyone would be healthier just by not eating things that contain HF. High fructose corn syrup is, is tremendously dangerous stuff, by the way. Any amount of high fructose corn syrup is too much. That's the, that's the problem with high fructose corn syrup, is any amount is too much. Because our body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know where to process it. It doesn't know where to put it. It's not like eating too much vitamin C, where our body can just, oh, we got too much vitamin C. We're going to use this little bit, and then we're going to toss the rest. Because that's what happens with certain things. With high fructose corn syrup, it's instantly confusing everything in the body. It confuses your brain. It confuses your pancreas. Your kidneys don't know what to do with it. Your intestines don't know what to do with it. Your liver, everything gets a shock. It's like, what happened? Why did you do this to me? Didn't you get a good indication from the first time you had high fructose corn syrup and you were like, you know, you're making the baby like, what the face? Like, gross. I mean, but we got used to it. We got used to it when they got rid of the regular sugar and soda pop and they implemented high fructose corn syrup. I remember when that happened. I'm old enough to remember. And I remember thinking like, what is wrong with this soda? It tastes like crap. And that was back when we were, you know, drinking soda. But soda was healthier for us when it actually contained natural sugar, which is totally crazy to even think about. It's like, wow, that was healthier to have regular sugar. But now high fructose corn syrup comes in and they put so much in there that it just damages everything. And if we just keep consuming it and consuming it and consuming it, we're going to have organ failure over time. We're going to have type 2 diabetes, which is going to be harder to reverse, you know, because you're just addicted to something that we should have been avoiding in the first place. If it was up to me, high fructose corn syrup in all countries would be illegal. We wouldn't be using those. They would have to find a new way to sneak it into products because I just think it's absolute nonsense. It's trash. It's killing our country. It's killing other countries that allow it to be put into their products. And many other countries have made high fructose corn syrup illegal. <clears throat> They're not allowed to put it in their products. I wonder why. Because it kills their population and they don't want to kill their people. But here in the United States, it's a great way to sweeten up everything. I mean, just, just fantastic, huh? Hmm. Oh, let's see. What do we got going on here? Best to have regular soda. It's best to not have any soda at all, in my opinion. But, you know, soda water, if you got to have the bubbles. But it's just not a great thing to have. We're talking about carnivore there. Carson Clary. Carson Clary, is that the name there? Uh, we're talking about carnivore topics. Uh, I just made up some of these uh, snacks here. Fried them up in a pan so I got the nice browning. But this is like on-the-go type items uh, that carnivores should be packing in their bag or in their car. That way they can just grab a bite and boom. They're not going to be tempted to walk into uh, convenience stores or stuff like that on the road. Um, because I'm an Alaskan truck driver. I have to come up with my own solutions. Because for one, snack options are, especially for driving the Alaskan highways, we don't have many snack options along the way. We have some stops, and they're about every, you know, one or two hours apart. So if you're needing something, you need to pack it beforehand. you got to make sure you got what you need before you get on with your trip. Can you eat nuts on the carnivore diet? Well, it depends on how serious you want to be on the carnivore diet. Now, the problem with nuts... It's the same problem as eating pork rinds because pork rinds are something that's considered carnivore diet. But the problem with nuts and the problem with pork rinds, at least for me, I'm talking from experience. Um, the nuts have oxalates and oxalates tend to screw up a lot of stuff in our body. Um, the oxalates were a problem before I started doing carnivore. I was, uh, I was getting too many oxalates from uh, cashews, peanuts, raw spinach, a lot of raw vegetables have, contain a lot of oxalates. And those oxalates were creating kidney stones. This is before I was losing any weight at all, by the way. So I started getting kidney stones. And that's when I started implementing the use of avoiding those products. But the problem 
get back to the main topic here that I was trying to explain. As the problem is, is that um, nuts and pork rinds are very, very easy to overeat. So depending on where you want to be, like are you trying to lose weight or you're just trying to get healthier, it's all up to the individual. So me personally, I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm not going to be adding in pork rinds. I'm not going to be adding in, you know, handful of nuts. And that, that's the next thing. It's, it, it's a handful. You don't sit there and eat an entire can of nuts. The same goes with pork rinds, a handful. You're not supposed to sit there and mouth through the entire bag of pork rinds and expect to lose any weight. Expect for your weight loss not to stall. You know, expect for good things to happen after you just gorged on an entire bag of pork rinds. Carnivore? Safe? Yes, absolutely. But will it have adverse effects on your body? Yes, 100% on both both plants, you know, peanuts. And I'm I'm not against people eating nuts. You know, if you, you can handle, you know, a handful of nuts here or there, but it's got to be like a handful. You know, you can't just... I mean, it'd be like me sitting here trying to eat this entire container in one sitting and expecting something good to happen at the end. Well, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too many calories, you know, and it's not going to work out for, you know, when I eat dinner later. So it's just going to, it's just going to stall me out. But this is just good stuff to have on hand to snack on, you know, because the fats, the proteins, all of that works. It helps keep us in ketosis. There's the key to weight loss for us is, is being in a perpetual state of ketosis. Now, without being in ketosis, our weight loss tends to stall. And then we have to get up and actually do stuff. And doing stuff is something that most of us don't like doing because we have to actually like lift up stuff and put it back down or go for walks. And many of us don't. We just don't. And that's just the reality of it all. You know, sus sustainability is the key. You know, if you want to lose more weight, yeah, walking is a great option. But is that a sustainable lifestyle for you? I mean, yes, we have to walk back and forth to the car. We have to walk into work. But are you going on extra walks throughout the day? Now, at lunchtime and break time, that's the best time to go for walks. Because if you're going for a walk, you're not going to be diving into a bunch of random snacks, even if it's carnivore related. You know, like getting in trouble with pork rinds, for instance. Because it's in a bag, it's pre-made, it's easy to pack, but it's easy to overeat. So if we limit our intake, we try to eliminate all the snacking, everything just seems to work out great. I mean, my weight has plateaued, but it's plateaued for a lot of reasons. It's also the change of season going on here in Alaska. Um, it, there's a lot of stress involvement there. I have been working out and walking more, so that's releasing cortisol. Cortisol does slow down weight loss, that, and this is stuff I've been learning as I go. And I haven't been learning this on my own. I've been learning this from the community, and when the community talks to me, I take it to heart, I take notes, and I'll go research it for myself. I don't believe what anybody says without taking a deeper dive into it, especially if I agree with it. So if I agree with something you say, you know, I'll take a mental note, I'll go check it out after the live stream and be like, all right, well, I'm going to look into this. Somebody said such and such, is this, is this true? Is it going to work for me? And I'm just working with stuff that works for me. Now, my stuff doesn't necessarily work for everybody out there, but if you kind of like break down what I'm doing... And you create it, create your own strategy for either weight loss or better health or, you know, to improve back pain and get rid of arthritis. And it, this stuff works. I mean, this is the only reason I'm talking about this is if this carnivore way of life does, didn't work, I wouldn't be wasting my time. I wouldn't be out here talking about this ever. I'd be like, no, I don't, you don't see me out here talking about 100% keto because it didn't work for me. So I can't talk about my experience of 100% keto. I, I did do vegan diet. I did the vegetarian diet. It didn't work for me. That's why I'm not out here talking about it. I don't shame people for wanting to be a vegan or a vegetarian. Uh, just just keep your emotional, freaking hormonal butt away from me because I don't care. I don't care that you're hormonal and you don't want me eating animals. I'm Alaskan native. Uh, we live up here in the north. Uh, growing all these vegetables to be to maintain a vegan lifestyle just seems not very productive for us. If anything, it was going to cost us too much. And the plants and fruits and all that stuff that shipped up here on the boats, it's all covered in crap. I mean, it's, it's horrible stuff. I believe somebody dropped me in uh, a present and I thank you there. I don't know who that was. Let me back up a little bit. Stu. Hey, Stu. Thank you. $9.99. That's awesome. I appreciate you very much. You know, I'm just... 
I'm really not out here to make a bunch of money. That's not what that's not what we're about here. I'm just out here to try to help people help themselves because if we can't help ourselves, I can't hold your hand. I can't hold anybody's hand on the other side of the screen. All I can do is get out here and discuss what's working for me. If some of this information is great for you, and if some of this information is stuff that you want to hear about, by all means, subscribe to the channel. I'm not out here begging for subscribers. I didn't get to 3,000 subs by saying, oh, please subscribe to me because I'm going to provide you with a bunch of random nonsense. No. The people that subscribed to my channel subscribed because they were interested in my weight loss journey. They were interested in how I lost 100 pounds in 15 weeks. They were interested in my carnivore journey. Uh, they were interested in the keto stuff that I was talking about. And I continue down the road to discuss this stuff because this is what my channel is wrapped around. Is Right now it's the carnivore diet, it's weight loss, it's getting into better health. It's sharing from experience that people can relate with that people find interesting. I am not a YouTube genius. I am not trained on YouTube, you know, to provide information in a specific way. I don't promote products. Um, I mean, the closest thing to making any extra money at all is I have, you know, the option for super chats and stuff like that on my channel. I do have the membership option open for anybody that wants to become a membership, uh, a member of the channel. Now, that's just basic ways for anybody that believes in my message to help support the channel. It does help me out. We are financially struggling. I'm not begging for money. Now, another thing, YouTube doesn't pay me to come out here to do this. I get paid, I think I figured it out yesterday after the last live stream. So I get paid approximately $3 a day to get out here for an hour, maybe two hours, and just continue to make weekly updated videos on the weekends. I get 2 to $3 a day for putting in over 60 to 80 hours worth of effort into this YouTube channel. Now that seems like utter nonsense. And sometimes I would believe so. But if it helps people, I, I believe it's worth it. If I could help anybody on the other side of the screen, you know, hopefully maintain some better health, get some better ideas on what they can do for themselves, understand the process of where I came from, morbid, being completely morbidly obese to borderline regular obese. That's a big deal to me. And it's worth sharing, you know, because I care about people. I want people to actually experience some better days and if they should be experiencing better days right now, I congratulate you. I would just hope that you make better decisions, you know, better decisions than I made and many of the other people that surround me because we all made a lot of bad decisions. You know, we all heard the warnings, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. We heard that, you know, eat more salads and stuff like that. Get more exercise. Yeah, we heard it all. Uh, we also heard stay away from high fructose corn syrup. Don't drink so much alcohol. Yep, we heard that too. Don't smoke cigarettes. Yep, heard that too. What are we still struggling with? All of the above. And that's why a lot of us are doing the carnivore diet is to avoid all of the crap, to avoid all the nonsense that we dealt with for so many years. And it just hurts my brain when somebody that's eating unhealthy comes up to me and says, you're doing it. You're going to die from eating that way. Don't you know anything? Well, yeah, I do know something. I know that it's not true. You know, I've eaten multiple pounds of bacon. I've eaten non-stop eggs for entire weeks at a time. Um, the only thing the eggs did was increase my testosterone levels. It, it leveled out my moods. I wasn't hormonal. It was fantastic. This works for women too. But yeah, the pounds of bacon, I, I felt sluggish, a little bit sluggish, so I backed off on the bacon consumption. But that's just because I noticed the feeling that I wouldn't have noticed before when I was highly carb and sugar addicted. I just would not have even noticed because I had so many compounding issues going on in my, in my entire body that I couldn't recognize a specific problem. I had so many aches and pains in my entire body. I just thought it was normal. I thought everybody was supposed to hurt that way. Since I started the carnivore diet, I don't hurt that way anymore. You know, I don't wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, my back or my hips numb or I can't feel my feet or my legs hurt because it, it went from my neck all the way down my body. My hands were hurting, elbows, shoulders, you name it. I had pain all over the place and the carnivore diet and weight loss fixed all that. I mean, it's, it's almost like somebody waved a magic wand. It didn't take that much effort. And that, that's what I like to try to promote It's like, hey, you know, my first 100 pounds of weight loss was done with little to no exercise. Seriously, little to no exercise. Lost 100 pounds. 15 weeks. 
is that incredible? That's incredible to me. That's worth talking about. You know, even after I did it and I made the video, I'm like, dude, you did that. And I didn't think I'd be good at doing anything. You know, I drive trucks. I'm really good at driving trucks. You know, you hire me to drive a truck. I'm going to do the best job. I'm going to try to take care of your equipment and not tear it up. But when I lost that first 100 pounds of weight, you know, I shared that video with my mom. My mom watched that video and about 20,000 other people watched that same video uh, for just about the entirety of the video. I mean, the analytics were amazing on that video but because it was a good, solid, rock-solid video. But, you know, I'm not there to toot my own horn. But my mom watched that and she was just like, wow, that's amazing. You did that and you made this video. I mean, she gave me a, she gave me a thumbs up in a way and, you know, kind of like a, a hug through the phone because she lives on the East Coast. I live in Anchorage, Alaska. So there's about three to 4,000 miles that separate us. But she actually said that, you know, son, I'm proud of you. We don't hear that very often, do we? You know, son, daughter, I'm proud of you. You know, we don't tell our wives, we don't tell our children often enough how proud we are of them and I will tell you one thing when I heard that I'm proud of you coming out of my mom it did something I mean it, it touched me right in the feelers I was like wow mom you're proud of me and she's like you just keep doing what you're doing share your adventure people need to hear that motivated me to keep going at that time I wasn't doing live streams I was scared to death I was scared to death to hit this button because I couldn't, at that time, I was still having a hard time completing uh, sentences. There was a lot of ums and ahs, awkward pauses, uh, frustrating moments. If an animal were to run across the table, I'd freak out. I'd lose it. I'd lose all train of thought. I'd be completely off in left field. I wouldn't be able to hold a conversation and ramble on for over an hour and a half. No freaking way. And Carnivore Scott, who was in the room earlier, you know, he was the one that got introduced me to live streaming because I was like, man, I got to step outside my bubble. I got to, if I want to get over my anxiety, if I want to get over my depression, I need to start stepping outside of my kitchen, you know, and getting in front of different people at different times. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Donna Couture, seven is live eating meat only gets rid of all of your cravings, which makes it easier to limit what you eat, thus losing weight. Absolutely. Um, now, one thing Carnivore Todd talks about from the Carnivore Cure is that you eat through your cravings. If you have uh, something like this on hand and you're having a craving for a bag of Doritos or something like that, that's just where this stuff is important. Is because if you just take a bite of something like this, your, your craving goes away. Now, another trick I use is water. Well, absolutely amazing to get the cravings to go away. You drink some water. You drink a lot of water. Just drink a lot of it. Go, you know, drink drink like that much water. And then all of a sudden you realize you're like, oh, I wasn't hungry. And then your brain clicks on and thinks, I was just thirsty. What the heck? Hmm. Okay. And you go on throughout your day. You're hydrated. Most of us are dehydrated anyways. I've been slacking off on the water uh, for the last couple of weeks. I think that's what has a lot to do with my uh, stalled weight loss is since I'm at home, I'm not on a regular work schedule because this is my work to go bag options. I need to start implementing these in the house as as regular consumption options options. So electrolytes in this one, water in this one. This one over here is additional water. This equals approximately a gallon. That's about how much water I should be drinking every day to make weight loss works. Uh, weight loss works. Weight loss work. Uh, let's see. He's eating fried ham and bacon grease. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I have. I also have some little bites here. Uh, this is Alaskan reindeer sausage, and I brown these in bacon grease as well. These taste just wow. I mean, you can make this up with kielbasa or something like that, but they're just super good, super healthy treats to take with you on the road, and they they satiate you. Now I haven't eaten any breakfast today. I typically don't. That is so juicy. Man, that is juicy. Mm. Yeah, the bacon grease on top of, you know, cooked up with the sausage combined just makes it so much better. Mm hmm I like it. Okay, I'm getting distracted now because that was, that was an amazing piece. Yeah. A little bit of coffee to wash that down. Mm. Anyways. 
let's see where we're at. Uh, I avoid processed meats myself. Yeah, a, pro a lot of processed meats, you just have to flip around the package and take a look. Take a look at the ingredients, understand what you can handle, what you can't handle. You know, is there some stuff in there? Because a lot of these sausages come with high fructose corn syrup. Uh, some of them add soy, and soy is an inflammatory type thing. Uh, vegetable oil, same thing, inflammatory. And if you try to limit your inflammatory products, you're going to feel so much better in two weeks. I just get rid of it all. Get rid of the high fructose corn syrup. You're going to feel great. That was a weird notification there. I don't even know. Oh, okay. I see what's going on there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Bless life. Uh, Heather P. Uh, what about chicken bacon? Is that safe? Chicken doesn't require, I'm sorry, it doesn't have enough fat content to, I mean, if you're, if you're shooting for weight loss, it is carnivore safe. Bacon is carnivore safe. Now, bacon does have enough fat if you're having digestive issues when on carnivore. So, especially when you're doing the initial transition to carnivore, which is hard for many of us uh, to get transitioned into, like, I think I'm going to prepare myself for 100% meats and fats. I wouldn't recommend people just cut off, just chop the nuts right off of everything and say, I'm going to be 100% carnivore tomorrow, or I'm going to do a, a lion diet tomorrow. I haven't even attempted the lion diet yet because there's a mental hurdle you have to go through preparation in order to achieve uh, even five days of the lion diet. I understand that. And I understand that from doing a lot of the fasting practices I've done up to this point. I'm just not ready for it yet. I can't specifically say I'm going to dedicate myself uh, to lion diet eating principles. So it's, it's incredibly hard to set yourself up in that way, just like it is to do like a five day water fast. Um, because you're eliminating a lot. I mean, you're eliminating everything, you know, all the sauces, all the seasonings. You're just at the only seasoning you're adding in the lion diet is salt and ruminant animals. Ruminant animals is just something that has an animal that has more than uh, more than one stomach. So four stomachs is, is like what's in a cow. So if I was going to do the lion diet, it would be mainly the, that type of meat and stuff like that. But yeah, chicken does not. It tends to slow down uh, weight loss. I ate a bunch of chicken wings. I felt horrible. I just made those. I made some yesterday. Uh, we had some of those for dinner. I wasn't feeling great after eating about 10 chicken wings. Um, I did go to bed early and I woke up for a job that was the snow melted. We were going to haul snow last night and the snow was gone. So I wasn't hauling any snow in a dump truck because it disappeared. There wasn't enough to justify me being in a plow truck to plow snow. So I came home. I was wide awake and uh, I stayed up late last night. I was making, uh, I made up four burger patties. So I ate approximately one pound of burgers uh, before I went to bed last night. And I feel great after that. I felt full. I felt satiated. I felt energized when I got up this morning. And that's because of the extra added fat that's in the burger over the chicken. Uh, because there are some, you know, basic carbs, I believe, in, in chicken wings uh, from the skin and stuff like that. There is some fat content there, but it's not enough fat to make... To make me feel healthy so that that's why I ate, you know the 80 20 burger patties uh let's see there uh yeah lion diet is way too extreme for me and it is for a lot of people now those people that have done the lion diet successfully i applaud them because it's it's a hard one it's a like i said it's a mental challenge you know because when most people out here and even some people that are sitting here watching right now they hear the word fast and they're like no that means you're gonna starve well yeah it's it's an extreme elimination of a lot of things and a lot of things we love. So that would mean if I were to do the lion diet, I'd have to give up my morning cup of coffee. That's a tough one. I have given up coffee for over two weeks at one point in this weight loss journey because I wanted to see, okay, is the coffee doing anything? It will taking out the coffee change anything? And I noticed that it didn't. It didn't For me, it didn't. For other people, it does. So sometimes the elimination of black, I just drink my coffee black. There's no sugar. There's no creamer. I just drink coffee black. That's the way I like it. I like the way the, the coffee bean tastes. And so far, this doesn't really seem to be slowing down or messing up anything or making me feel any particular way. I just like the way the coffee bean tastes. And for some people, it does. It changes some things because we're all different. We all share a little bit different, different experience here. Uh, it's that disappeared. I don't know where that went. It looked good. You guys are doing a fantastic job. I really appreciate all the moderators that are on here. 
Um, you guys are really helpful. Okay, yeah, I can see why. I do love my veggies. Uh, well, veggies, I'm not against people eating veggies. I won't tell you, anybody to stop eating veggies. But I will tell you, chances of you having um, some issues that are just hard to explain might be coming from the vegetables. Uh, and that's just from my experience. Because when I eat vegetables, I have all kinds of weird issues. I mean, sometimes I might become a little more swollen. I might notice some inflammation. And, and nine times out of ten, it comes down to like random vegetables or, you know, products I may have consumed away from the house that had some vegetables, you know, anywhere close to them. Uh, could have been added seed oils. I mean, it, it's hard to tell because a lot of the vegetables that we buy at the stores, they're just covered in stuff. I mean, it, and so that throws in another aspect to trying to figure out what issues we have. And if we don't just eliminate the vegetables for a period of time. Now, I'm not telling anybody to permanently eliminate vegetables from their life either because there's a lot of people that do carnivore and they just do the elimination for a, you know extended period, you know, 30 to 90 days. They're figuring out themselves and then they slowly start adding in, you know, some other ingredients. Maybe it's vegetables. It might be specific type bread items, but very specific type things. And that's kind of how we figure out food allergies and stuff like that with small babies. You're doing the same thing. We're just doing it at an older age to try to figure out what's making us feel off. And that's, that's where the carnivore diet has been incredibly powerful. Because even on a vegan diet, there's so many variables in there. And you have to consider each one of those variables. Because cooking vegetables changes the complexity of the vegetable. You're losing some of the nutrients in some cases. Um... You're like with oxalates, for instance, if you eat raw spinach, you're going to get more oxalates than if you cook your spinach. So there's a there's an extreme variance right there that people have to consider when they're eating, you know, a vegetable type diet. And the same goes for these uh, these rock vegans, by the way, you know, they're eating raw vegetables. So as we know now that raw vegetables change considerably as we cook them, um, even broccoli, for instance, you know, we were told that. Uh, overcooking broccoli takes away all the nutritional value of, the, of broccoli or cauliflower, for instance. So, yeah, there's, there's just so many variables there. And if you overcook meat, it's, it doesn't do a whole lot. Now, if you burn it, if you scald it, and I don't care if you're, you're scalding vegetables, too. It creates carcinogens. Now, those carcinogens aren't necessarily helpful. This is why we don't burn them. We just brown them. But, all right, wow. Doo-doo fart. We got one of those. I love people like that. They just come in here and just think it's funny. And then I get to watch them go away. I don't have to do anything. I appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. I have 76 people in the stream. I don't know how many people like the stream. I appreciate anybody that can help us out. I mean, this doesn't really provide me any financial security, by the way. I just want to put that out there. I'm, I'm coming out here embarrassing myself, talking about my situation to people because I care. You know, I want people to live a healthier life. I believe this information should be free. You shouldn't have to join a club. You shouldn't have to join a gym. You should be able to lose weight easily without a whole lot of nonsense, you know, because I, I figured it out. I figured out how to lose weight without a whole lot of problems. But it's up to the individual to actually do something for themselves, you know, to get it started. Because you can sit there and listen to a thousand people on the internet, you know, how to cook or how to do this or how to clean. But if you don't implement any of those strategies into your daily life, you know, you're just a consumer at that point, which is where most of us were before we started losing weight. We were simply consumers of unhealthy product, uh, uh, products. And my dog wants to go outside. <clears throat> All right. You need to go out. We're going to take you outside. Yeah, you're tired of hearing me talk. Yeah, let's go. Come on. I'm going to kick you out the door. See you later. Nice thing about having a good, well-trained dog is she comes right back. That's awesome. I was always worried about that. You know, because we live in the city now and having a pet that runs off is just, just no fun at all. She'll be back inside in a, in a few minutes. She is a cute dog. Thank you, Rick. I mean, it's just one of those things. I, I just don't... She's so old. I can't remember. She's like up in her 80s or 90s in dog years. And I'm just so afraid that she's, she's not going to be with us much longer. And she's so covered in random lumps and bumps and... Um, Getting her taken care of, you know, with a veterinarian is it's just not going to be possible. So I just hope she doesn't go uh, horribly painful. I just don't want her to go through that. 
Come on in. There we go. See, it was that fast. I mean, she goes out, she does her business, and she could have wandered off like a lot of dogs do. But yeah, we haven't had a whole lot of problems with dogs. Thank goodness. You know, once in a while we get random stray dogs run through here, but uh, she tends to mind her own business. Yeah, dog's pretty cool. Bone broth is okay. Yeah, I do believe bone broth is okay. If you can make your own bone broth, I think you'll be light years ahead. But uh, I worked in a factory that made Swanson broth down in Missouri, in Joplin, Missouri. And uh, I, I believe that's where I got. So I got pneumonia. But okay, Swanson beef broth. When it hits the floor, in about five minutes, it smells like poop. You know, I'm not telling anybody that Swanson beef broth is unhealthy or there's any problems with it because it's that's probably the furthest thing from the truth. But when when the bone broth hits the floor and it just sits there and it dries out, it becomes stagnant, it, it gets a stench. And then all of a sudden it turns into like a dust and the dust gets kicked up in the air. And I inhaled some of that and I had a, uh, a really severe uh, pneumonia from it. I mean, it, I, I thought I was going to die. It was like coughing up a cinder block. It was really bad. But that was the only thing that affected me as far as when the pneumonia kicked in. That was the only variable that was there that I could come up with with my doctor. Uh, it was because I was in charge of running the assembly line. You know, I was, I was in charge of getting the boxes there. I had my own crew, uh, which was fantastic. I loved, the, I loved the people I worked with. I wasn't getting paid hardly anything, but I was trying to get off the truck driving route for a little while to be closer uh, to my children. Didn't work out so well, by the way, because you, it's hard when you're a truck driver and you try to come home and uh, be closer to family, you wind up going broke in the process. So, I mean, that's, that's the struggle that a lot of truck drivers in the country face every day is it's just the financial hurdles of trying to come home. So, but yeah, anyways, the uh, the bone broth did not did not go well when you inhale it. Apparently, it, it creates some sort of fungal issue in the lungs, and it's very hard to get rid of. Uh, so I spent about two to three weeks in bed. Uh, I was coughing up all kinds of nonsense, and it's just wow. So, but yeah, if you can make your, if you can go to your butcher, uh, you can actually buy bags of of bones uh, that you can take home. You just, it's real simple. Uh, you just put all, the, drop the bones in a pot. Put some water in there and just let it boil let it boil for two to three hours uh, if you need any like aromatic type seasonings or vegetables you want to put in there whatever that's it's up to you but that's the best way to make bone broth in my opinion you just let that just simmer on there you don't want it a rolling boil you want a nice you know a nice bubble going on there and then you can make some amazing bone broth and don't try to make too much it doesn't store very long in my opinion so if you're going to be drinking it daily you know, make enough that you can consume it within at least three days. That's the maximum. I would store bone broth in the fridge. You know, if you're you're putting it in Tupperware containers or, you know, single containers for use the next day, uh, you want to use it pretty quickly. It's not one of those things you want to store. Now you can freeze it, and that will store it pretty much as long as you want. So if you got bone broth, you can actually put it in a Ziploc bag. Uh, that's an option too. You can freeze it, and then when you want to use it, you just take it out, let it thaw out, reheat it in a pan. And there you go. Poof, you got super yummy, natural, healthy bone broth that, that works amazing. Now, that is another fast that somebody could try is a, is a bone broth fast. Now, you can do this for many different lengths of time. Uh, you can just drink nothing but bone broth uh, for 36 hours. That's You're still consuming something. You're still getting some calories. You're still getting some some health benefits from the, uh, from the bone broth. The marrow that comes out is super healthy for us. And that is a really good legitimate fast where you can actually consume something and have some minor calories that won't knock you out of ketosis or autophagy, depending on what you're looking for. Um, there will be some weight loss benefits there. Now expect the scale to go back up as soon as you eat your first meal, like even eating a few of these, that'll make your, your body react uh, to the fast and then you're gonna gain a couple pounds back. So you might lose five to six pounds in a 36 hour fast. So expect two to three pounds to come on immediately after you're doing the fast. And it's just, it's just how it is. Hello, Amber. I appreciate you being here. Let's see, Heather P. Uh, try Swanson chicken bone broth. I had bacon bits in it and it's so good. Yeah, that's not a bad option there either. I mean, if you, if you don't have the time or the know-how to really want to make your own bone broth, um, absolutely. Now I have a bag of bones in my, in my freezer. And I think that was a recommendation from like Dr. Berg or, 
uh, Ken Berry or somebody like that, but <coughs> um, basically save your bones. So if you have any bones that have decent marrow in them, you know, from eating a steak or eating ribs or uh, chicken, just throw them in a Ziploc bag, toss them in the fridge. They never go bad. And then uh, if you're feeling under the weather or just need to pick me up, uh, it's, a, it's a good option. Just break them out, throw them in a pan, same situation. Just boil them up for a little while, uh, get them up to a boil, then drop them back down to a simmer and create the broth. Let them sit there, you know, for a good hour, sometimes two hours, and then just you through most seasonal illnesses and uh, uh, you'll come out the other end you know feeling pretty functional and, and decent but all right we're about an hour and a half in here I'm kind of wanting to snack on this a little bit more it's hard to talk and snack I, I made that that might have been it might be funny for some people I my feed dropped off there for a second yeah feed definitely dropped off for a second and it's probably just because I'm running the internet down around here. So when you run out of internet, I guess it's time to call the stream quits. But hey, I want to thank anybody that stuck around to the end of the stream. If anybody's suffering with obesity and stuff, I love to talk about these topics. Also, if anybody's talking about, you know, wanting to learn more about the carnivore diet, my experience with the carnivore diet is what I uh, uh, like to promote and uh, talk about and stuff like that. Because we don't learn just from people preaching all the time. We need people that are talking about their experience, what's happening. Uh, sometimes we have good days, sometimes we have bad days. Other days we find out that, you know, this or that might have might be proving to be the wrong way of doing it too. So this this is super helpful. The carnivore community is loving and caring. And like I said, if you're morbidly obese, you know, wanting to make your first step, you know, definitely reach out. You can comment to me in any one of my videos, and I can try to help you out from just basic personal experience if you're wanting to get started on a on a new journey for your life that, that's what i promote is people to be healthy and happy uh actually get outside and be able to do stuff with family and kids because that's where i was i was stuck i was so stuck uh, i was i was afraid i wasn't going to be able to go camping again because my sleep apnea i was afraid i wasn't going to be able to go out on adventures or journeys with my kids or you know I, I was scared to go to the school because every time i went to the school i came home sick uh, and that was because of my poor eating habits, the way I was eating, uh, all the carbs, all the sugars and stuff like that was draining my immune system. I had no immune system at all. So, you know, when COVID came to town, it stressed out a lot of people, you know, because our immune systems were compromised and then we were forced to stay home. And then all the foods that we were buying or getting delivered to the house, overly processed, further you know, lowering our defenses. And we, and we thought stuff like, you know, just taking zinc and stuff like that was gonna be the cure-all. And it wasn't. It's, it's what we eat every day is the cure-all. You know, if you focus on whole foods, you're gonna be light years ahead of the next nasty virus that comes through town. It's not gonna be 100% preventative, but you're gonna be ahead of the curve if you should get something like that. Because there's some of the carnivores out here, they have gotten COVID just recently. And they did remarkably well, you know, with the COVID that they got. So, I mean, that's worth, that's worth talking about. That's worth noting. I mean, I wish he would have done a video on his experience with the, and this, I believe this was Todd at Carnivore Cure. He just recently got COVID. And I wish he had done a video on that or talked about it a little bit more because I was like, man, that's, that's, and it's hard to talk about stuff like that too, because we're not supposed to be talking about it or discussing it because we're, we're just constantly being censored out here on YouTube for many things. And, uh, there's things I would love to talk about that I'm just not allowed to because uh, it'll get the channel banned, get us removed. So, yeah, we try not to do that. But anyways, if you're struggling, I, I pray for you. I pray every day for, you know, people that are struggling or family situations and stuff like that. I really do care about people in the community. And I just want to say God bless all of you. And thank you, Donna. And thank you, Carnivore with Nadine. I appreciate you guys. Uh, let's see. Luckily, never had it before I did keto. But all right, guys, I'm pretty well drained. I got to get out of the house. I got to go do something, maybe go for a walk because, uh, yeah, I need to get out and exercise more. You guys take care. I appreciate every single one of you that's in here helping to moderate because, yeah, it's just super helpful. All right, take care, guys. As I fumble with the buttons, doo -doo.